Hey guys, and welcome to the latest Just The Basics tutorial. In this episode, we're going to be creating this. So as you just saw, we're going to be creating a Lego face, mouth, eye, rig. We're going to try and cover all of those things in this tutorial. That way we can create something that will be easy, simple to use and can work across multiple scenes. This was actually a request from Citrin's Animation. I'm really sorry if I completely butchered the pronunciation of that, but thanks so much for such a great request. We're going to do our best to try and answer that question, how do you make a Lego mouth rig? So let's get straight into it. What we're going to do to start off is delete our default cube. I might add, just as I'm doing this too, that there are fantastic tutorials available already online about how to go about creating LEGO mouth rigs. And we don't mean to detract from any of these. We just thought we'd try a different approach. And this is inspired by some previous tutorials as well on how to go about creating this LEGO mouth rig. So we thought we'd try and incorporate some of the different things we've learned um, into this one tutorial. We'll include links for all the other tutorials we think are fantastic and excellent in their own way, so you can check them out if you like, because they might work better for what you're looking for. Well, to get started then, let's go back to um, our 3D model, 3D area, and let's go ahead and just, first of all, I'm going to start casting my key so you can see what I'm pressing, and let's check and add in a background image. So the first thing we're going to want to add in, you'll see in the description we've got links for all the assets we're going to use, so you can access those. And the first thing we're going to go to is, um, I've got a folder for background images, and it's all these pictures I've taken of LEGO faces, so that they're all royalty free, and yes, I still have LEGO figurines, maybe? Um, I might cut that. <laughs> okay, I don't know why I said that. So, let's just go ahead and select basic.png. And if we go to hit 1, then 5, and then hit Control alt 0 it'll lock our camera to that view. Let's just actually enable lock camera to view so we can center our camera, and you can see we've got that nice background image. To save time in this tutorial, we're not going to look at how to model a LEGO head. I've already done that, um, and we can just import it because we're focusing more on creating the LEGO mouth rig. But of course, by all means, you can go ahead and model or import your own head if you'd like to. But otherwise, you can access this in the description. And what it is, is um, this Lego folder here, called, or Blender folder here, called Lego Head. Just double click on that, go to Object, and select Lego Hair and Lego Head, because we want both of those. And we're going to append those from library. So what we can do is, in our background images, select it for our image from being displayed at the back to being displayed at the front. And let's just center that so that it's about the same size as our model head. Awesome. So now let's go ahead and split our view. That way we can start getting into making this rig. And then let's go split that view in half, not like that, but by dragging this panel upwards. We're going to change the top panel to node editor, hit N to get rid of that side toolbar. And the bottom panel we're going to change to UV image editor. So now in our main screen here, what we can do just lower the opacity of our background image and we can go ahead and hit shift A and add in add in a plane sorry and hit R X 90 to rotate that 90 degrees and then just getting out of camera view drag that out just until it's touching the edge of our Lego head mesh and there's a reason for this we'll discuss later so now what we can do go back to camera view and we can go ahead and give this well, actually, no, we don't need to give it anything just yet. But what we can do, just untick, lock the camera view, and zoom in. And maybe put our opacity of our background image up a little bit. And hit tab on our plane. And start scaling our plane down till it's about the width of our mouth. Then scale it down on the Z till it's about the height. Just so it's like created a box that completely covers our mouth. The reason for this is we can now go ahead and start hitting Control R and adding in some loop cuts and then scaling these on the Z and what this enables us to do is to distort our mesh to the shape of our mouth and that's going to be really handy it's not completely necessary to get it perfect but it will just make it look a lot cleaner and a lot neater now if you've got vertices select um, enabled just click edge select because you want to be able to select these different edges and scale them move them 
that way it can be nice and easy. So, comment below too. What's your inspiration for um, learning how to make Lego animations? Is it something to do with all the Lego movies, which have been pretty fantastic? Maybe even comment, what was your favorite Lego movie? I think mine's just the original Lego movie. I don't think you can top that until maybe the Lego Movie 2 comes out. That might be a bit better. I'm looking forward to it. Let me know if you're looking forward to the Lego Movie 2, and if not, why not? Just some general chatter, I guess. <laughs> I don't know why I'm still talking. So let's, now that we've modeled that to the shape of that mouth, roughly, what we can go and do now is give it an image texture. So up here in our node editor, hit new to add a new texture. And what I'm going to do, I might just drag this viewport out just a little bit. And I'm going to select my diffuse shader and delete it because I want to add in a principal BSDF shader because the principal shader just has way more options and variety and it's a lot simpler to use. Now let's go ahead and hit shift A, add in an image texture. What we can do is we can drop color to color. Go ahead, click open, navigate to, oh, I've got a folder called face templates. If I switch to picture view, you can see I've got all these different faces cut out um, with transparent backgrounds. So that makes it really easy to work with. And I've got one here, basic smile. Go and double click on that. And now just load that basic smile PNG in our UV image editor. Hit tab, go into edit mode on our mouth and hit U. Project view, project from view bound, sorry. And then I'm just going to scale that down. And what this is doing, if you've never done unwrapping before, is it's just applying this texture to the shape of our mesh. That way it fits nicely because otherwise you'd find we've got this tiny Lego image texture um, and it just doesn't look good at all. So we're just scaling this by using S, X and Y and G to grab. Y is up and down, X is width. So if you want to make it a bit shorter, wider, yeah, you, I think you get the idea. So now what we can do is if we go to rendered view and just remove the opacity, you'll notice that we've got our image completely there. I might just go to world settings, go to use nodes and just turn that up to white so you can actually see. And what you can see is we've got our mouth nicely there except the edges aren't transparent, which is a bit of a problem. To fix this, we just go to node editor, hit shift A and add in a transparent BSDF node. Just drag our material output out. I'm going to drag these out a little bit and hit Shift A and we're going to add in a pardon me, mix shader. Now it's important to drop this transparent BSDF down into the top if we want it to make the rest of our image invisible to work well for us. And then just simply go ahead and grab the alpha value from our image texture and drop it in as a factor in the mix shader. So you can just look at that. that this is the basic setup that Blender uses when you import um, an image as a plane with a transparent background as well or with an alpha channel. So there we go. Now our mouth is invisible around the edges and looks pretty good. What we might do to our mouth, just so we don't have any shadows behind it, because at the moment, if we were to look maybe from the side, you can see that it's casting a shadow and we don't really want that. We want it to look like it's actually part of the material of the Lego figure. We can go to object settings, which is represented by this cube this orange cube and down there you'll see in the bottom we have cycle settings just disable shadow and now while we still have a reflection because our face is nice and shiny if we go to camera view we won't have any shadow from our mouth casting onto our Lego head which just will work really well later on and you'll see why so what we can do now is go ahead and start rigging this mouth so how are we going to do that well this is a fantastic little method you, um, we found in one of the other Lego Mouth tutorials, which is using shape keys. So, full credit to um, that video. I'll put a link to it because I can't remember the title. I'm so sorry. But what we're going to do basically is go ahead and in, I think it's data, object data, settings, object data, this panel here. Under shape keys, we're going to go ahead and hit plus to add a new shape key. Now, we're going to double click that and rename it to basic smile. Now what we uh, not sorry what we're going to do now is hit plus to add a new shape key and we might rename this to something like uh, friendly smile and this will be oh, too many capitals this will be our next shape we're going to create 
So what we can do, turn our background opacity image, the opacity of our background image back up, and go ahead and remove that background image, and we're going to load in a new one. In this case, we're going to load in this nice, friendly smile. So it's a pretty similar smile, it's just you can see the teeth of the character in this one. So what we can do now is go, lower the opacity just a little bit, so it's not too strong, and hit tab to go into edit mode, making sure we're on friendly smile, and we can start moving our mesh around so that it fits the shape of this new mouth. So what shape keys basically does, if you're unfamiliar with it like I was, is it basically allows us to go into the edit um, or edit the properties of the shape, the mesh of an object, and actually keyframes the different shapes we might create. So that way we can transition from one shape to another by means of keyframes, which is really awesome for this because if we want to create different shaped um, Lego mouse, we can transition very easily and simply from one to the other. And this is, once we've got this basic process down, you'll see that it's something you can kind of just recreate with as many different Lego faces as you want, whether that's taking pictures of your own Lego faces. I'm going to include link to quite a few Lego faces and maybe I'll even update that over time. But basically, um, once you know the procedure for doing this, you'll be able to do it all on your own and create tons of different variety for tons of different um, yeah Lego mouse that hopefully will look really cool. So now I've got that to basically cover that mouth there. So that's all I'm really looking for. And that's looking pretty good. Now you notice if I go out of edit mode, it just reverts back to the basic smile we had. That's because down here underneath shape keys, we have value. Now value for our friendly smile is currently set to zero. So as we drag that up, It'll, you'll see it actually transforms from our basic smile to our friendly smile. Zero showing completely our basic smile, point, uh, whereas one showing completely our friendly smile. But you may be wondering how are we going to go about texturing these because they obviously have two different textures and if I were to render this right now you'd see that all it's done is it's distorted our texture for our basic smile. So that's where it comes into using the next feature of our object settings which is UV maps. So let's call our first UV map that we've got here, let's call that basic smile because this is going to represent the UV map, oh I've got caps lock on, I hope I'm not the only one who does that like every day. So what this is going to represent is the UV map for our basic smile. Let's go ahead and hit plus to add a new UV map and let's call this friendly smile. You might be like me and you always can't be bothered to rename things, but it actually does make it a lot easier when you're doing a tutorial. So what we can do now is hit tab to go into edit mode, toggle the A button to, or the A key to select everything, and just in our UV image editor, go ahead and just load in uh, friendly smile, just on face templates, and should have it somewhere here. Let's see, friendly smile, there it is. Okay, so now what we can do is go ahead and hit U, um, while in edit mode and click project from view bounds and what we're going to do is just once again scale this down to match our UV projection and just drag that around and like I said it doesn't have to be perfect just cover our image because our background is transparent so that makes it a lot easier for doing this so now what we can do is because if you notice and we go to render we still have the same texture nothing's changed so let's fix that Let's go ahead and in our node editor, toggle A to deselect everything, then press B, which will allow us to drag and select just our um, material shaders up to our mix shader. We don't want the material output. And we can hit Shift D to duplicate them and drag them underneath. Let's drag our material output out just a little bit. And let's go ahead and hit Shift D on our mix shader to drop in another mix shader. And what we're going to do here with our bottom image texture we've now created is change that from basic smile to friendly smile and then we can go ahead and drag this mix shader into the bottom of this mix shader <laughs> lots of mix shaders everywhere now if we go to render view you'll notice we've kind of got a mix of our basic smile and our friendly smile that's because our mix shader value which is controlling the two is currently set to 0 0.5 so it's showing half of each texture if we were to change that to one you'd notice that we're showing only our basic smile but if we were to change that to um, 1, you'll notice we're showing our friendly smile texture, but it's still not projecting correctly. 
What we need to do then to fix this is go ahead to our nodes and add in another node which is shift A UV map. Now this is what is going to help us solve this problem. So if we drag this up or duplicate it up for our top one and go ahead and click on this little textured ball here we can select basic smile and drop the UV into the vector. Now if we do the same with this one but for our bottom one select friendly smile we can drop UV into vector again and you notice what happens is now it has our nice wrapped friendly smile for that um, friendly smile texture. So to give you a basic idea of how this is going to work is if you want to rig your mouth we can choose between the different textures by setting our mix shader value from either 0 to 1. And you can right click on that to insert a keyframe so just say for example if I wanted to set a keyframe of it being just a basic smile i will go to frame 1, right click, select insert keyframe then maybe go to frame 20, drag that all the way up to uh, 1 and click insert keyframe. So now if I were to play that back you'd notice that my texture nicely transitions between the two. But if I wanted to go ahead and make my mouth shape transition with it, what I could do is go and keyframe the value of my shape keys. So if I set that to frame 1 and set my value to 0, what I can do is I can go ahead and click right click and click insert keyframe. And if I go to frame 20, I can drag that all the way up to 1 and right click and insert another keyframe. So now if I were to play that back, it transitions nicely between my two faces. I think that our uh, transition between my image textures might be a bit too slow, so maybe I would set it to like change over maybe two or three keyframes. Like having my um, factor at zero at frame 17, and you know, so you don't see that like uh, transition as much. It looks more stop motion style. So if I play that, it has that more of a stop motion appeal. So that's a basic concept of what we're doing. So to just help lock this in, let's go ahead and create one more mouth shape. Um, we can do this by adding plus another shape key. And let's call this um, apprehensive. So like a kind of apprehensive smile will make it. And let's go and add in a new background image. So get rid of that smile one. Go to background images and this, I've got it called Fright and Apprehensive Fright. I'm not really sure. Uh, one of those will work, <laughs> hopefully. And let's just bring that opacity up a little bit. And let's go Tab into Edit Mode. And let's resize this. The same kind of thing to just roughly fit the shape of our mouth. So this is like maybe a little bit tedious, but it's actually really fun. You know, um, if you're doing this with multiple mouths, I recommend just like chucking some music on, maybe some Lego movie soundtrack music that will help keep you in the right frame of mind. We're actually creating a Lego um, stop motion style 3D animated short film. So this is actually probably going to be the exact method we'll use for animating the mouths and that. So stay tuned, we'll probably send a link um, through on our channel. We might not upload it on this channel, but on our other channel so that everyone can watch it if you're interested. Um, yeah, that that's kind of covers the basic shape, I think. So that's good. So once again, what we can do, go in here, toggle A, B to select everything here, and then hit Shift D to duplicate them, and drag our material output again, add in another mix shader, drag this along a bit, and once again, connect our mix shader to the free slot on this mix shader. Lots of mix shaders everywhere. <laughs> and let's just clear our UV map for that. So we can go into here. Oh, we better actually load in our apprehensive face template. And here it is, apprehensive. So drop that in. And let's go ahead and hit... Oh, before we do that, I'm sorry, I keep forgetting. Go down to UV image editor and just change that to apprehensive as well. Now let's go and hit U, project from view bounds for UV mapping. And once again, we'll scale that down just till it fits the shape. Brilliant. And let's go ahead and... Oh, I hope I didn't mess that up because I forgot to add a new UV map. Um, we'll just call this apprehensive and hopefully we didn't... 
affect that. I probably did though. Yeah, I did. I'm um, sorry. I'm going to have to go back to this smile and just unwrap this one again quickly because I may have forgotten to make sure we added a new UV map. Sorry, <laughs> everyone. So I just scale that down in there. Okay. That should have fixed it. So now we go back here to change, going back to our apprehensive face. Um, there we go. So now, and just select this UV map here and set it to apprehensive. Not that I've even spelt that correctly. Oh, it's one of those days. <laughs> so now, let's go ahead and check out how that's looking. So once again, it's controlled up here by our mix shader. So if we were to um, wanted to see our apprehensive, let's get rid of that background image. If we want to see our apprehensive smile, we could just turn that all the way up to one, and it's currently disappearing. I'm not sure why. Maybe we need to change that shape up there too. Why is that disappearing? Whoops, that's sorry. That was because I changed the name of it. So once again, we can control the uh, value of that using the mix shader, just dragging it from between 0 and 1. And there you have it. We can control which UV texture we're displaying, and then also the value which mouth shape we're displaying. So that's the basic concept for creating these different Lego mouth shapes. And it's really handy because you can keyframe between the two to create the talking kind of effect that um, we showed a little bit of, like if you want to make a voice or if you want to and well, do any kind of mouth movements. And so that's the basic process. Once you've got that in mind, that's pretty much it, what you need to know for doing the mouth. Now let's look at maybe adding some eyes and other features. So what we can do is go ahead and hit Shift A, add in another image plane, RX90, to rotate it on the x-axis by 90 degrees. And let's go ahead with this and add a modifier and we're going to add a subdivision surface, crank that up to render 6 and view 6 with subdivision so it's nice and circle like an actual Lego I would be. Let's just have it touching the outer of our Lego mesh and drag it along just so it's um, roughly in position where it should be. You can go to our camera view and look at our background image if you want to line that up a little bit depending on what expression you want them to have. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and hit tab, UV and smart project for this is fine because it's a nice circle. Let's add a material. Where's my material? There it is. And let's get rid of that diffuse shader and add in a principled shader, BSDF, principled BSDF. Add in a image texture. And I've got two image textures, one for the right eye and one for the left eye. I don't think it really matters. Like I don't think anyone would honestly notice if <laughs> like, hey, you've copied that eye and you're using the right eye as the right and left eye. I don't think anyone would really care to be honest, but maybe maybe you notice a difference. So both textures are available. Uh, what we can do, add in our transparent BSDF and our mix shader. Good little process to remember if you ever have a transparent image you're trying to import into Blender. Make sure transparency on top and add alpha as the factor. Sweet. So now if we were to look at that, um, you would see our eye is really small. That's because I haven't scaled it. Let's go to, where is it, right eye. Get out of this view and scale that down so it actually fits. And for some reason when I smart project it, um, it's actually kind of like rotated sideways. So I just got to rotate it by negative 90 degrees just so it's aligned the right way. But like then again, I don't think you'd even notice if you didn't rotate it. Scale that up a little bit, scale it. Okay, let's look at that. There we go, perfect. So like I said, same thing, you can just go ahead and hit Shift D, duplicate that and drag it to the position of the other eye. Now if you wanna go ahead and add in eye pupils, like these white pupils here, we can do that. And I've got some images for those available too. Just simply go ahead and hit Shift D duplicate our little circle and scale it down to the size maybe just drag it forward on the Y just a little bit and what we'll do under material just click this little three so that when we change our material it doesn't affect our um, main part of our eye either so go ahead just change that texture change it to our white pupil once again we'll go to left and right don't think it really matters to be honest and just duplicate that by hitting shift D and dragging it across 
So now if we go to rendered view, we could look at our mouth. Oh, and we might need to just quickly scale those up, those uh, UV maps for the pupils. So because they're so much smaller, just that way they're the right size. These are all excellent processes to learn anyway with Blender. It will help you become a very skilled freelance artist or very skilled at hopefully making your videos, just learning some of these techniques of unwrapping and um, editing your UV mesh and learning shape keys. So scale that down. Let's get it to kind of fit if I can. There we go. And now if we remove our background and render that, there we go. So we've got our nice Lego face. And the same thing with the eyes. For example, if you want to go ahead and add in shape keys, you could. We'll just set this to um, basic eye position. And maybe let's go ahead, um, have one where it's kind of like a sleepy eye position. So if you want to do like um, your Lego man waking up, go to tab into edit mode. And let's add in um, a loop cut. And we'll just scale it down a bit. might be easier if I'm in material view and let's kind of scale these two sides down on the Z so there we go so if we switch between our sleep mode and obviously we'll need to do the same for our pupil add a new shape key I'll just won't rename that but name this to sleep and same thing you know um, it's like that and we just need to make sure you're in edit mode because if you're like, it, this doesn't work as like a keyframe. So if you just not in edit mode and you move that around, it's not going to change the position of it. So make sure you're in edit mode when you're deforming any of the geometry. Um, so that way it actually keeps it as like a keyframe. I need to go in really small for this because obviously you, I don't think you'd even see your pupil so make that super tiny and the same thing so now if we were to keyframe that we could just simply go chuck a keyframe in there for our pupil uh, keyframe in there for our eye change it to something like frame 20 and um, drop the keyframe or the value down to one and set that same with our pupil so now make sure I've done that and then when we if we were to play that back and you can do that to kind of have like a opening starting effect and use this to rig really any part of the face using these image textures. Now you may be still wondering though, how are we going to get this to wrap to the actual shape of our head? Because obviously our Lego head's curved and these are flat planes. What we can do is we can add a special modifier which is under the form called shrink wrap. Let's click keep above surface and change our offset to 0.01. What this shrink wrap modifier does is it allows us to take a mesh and wrap it to another mesh. In this case, our mouth and eyes to our curved Lego head. So let's uh, select this pin drop tool and target our Lego head. And there you'll notice that we have nicely wrapped this mouth, except for this little bit here. We might just need to change that offset to 0 0.15. And there we go. So now it's nicely wrapped. We can do the same for the eyes, add in a shrink wrap modifier keep above surface 0 0.1 and as for the target the Lego head the pupils we can do the same for we just might need to um, change the offset to 0 0.15 so they're not in the same mesh as the eye itself okay now just do that for the other eye quickly so now if we render that go to camera view that's looking pretty good so what we can do though is actually parent these to our Lego head and you can do this with any Lego head you can duplicate these eyes and wrap them and then uh, parent them to another Lego head so that you can easily copy this mouth rig to anyone or any Lego character and you can adjust it um, still and it will like you know go wherever your Lego character moves so to do that we're gonna select our mouth festival then shift select our Lego head and hit control P set parent to object keeping transform. So now if we were to rotate our head you'll notice our mouth will stick with it though nothing else will because it's not parented. So let's go ahead and um, parent maybe our pupils to our eyes 
Then we'll parent our eyes to our head. And if at any time you accidentally parent the wrong thing, you can just simply hit Alt P and hit clear parent and then they'll remove any parental properties to it. So that's a handy little thing to remember as well. So that's basically it for creating this Lego mouth rig. Like I said, you can recreate this um, process by adding different images, just overlaying them and keyframing the mix shader as well as the shape keys and making sure you don't forget to add a new UV map if you want to add in different image textures. But let's look at before we finish, just creating um, or helping create our Lego head or character to be a bit more realistic. There's just three things I think that actually help add an element of realism. So the first one is textures. You'll notice in the Lego movie, if you watch that, that all their Lego characters had subtle uh, surface imperfections such as fingerprints, dust, uh, scratches. So we're going to do the same. And how we're going to do this is we've got some image textures. These are from a fantastic website, which I'm not sponsored by just to be clear, but it's called polygon.com. You can purchase these there, but if you don't want to um, pay for a subscription, They've very generously got um, the provision so that you can sign up for a free 30-day trial and you get given credit so you'll be able to download all these textures for free uh, using that free 30-day trial. Now the textures that I'm using, i just pull them up really quickly so I can tell you, uh, are for Dust Small 005, Fingerprints 006, Scratches Light 1 um, or 10, Scratches Mix 008. Yeah, so those um, are the four textures I'll be using. I'll have a link for them in the description. And what we can, or how we can use them, is we can go selecting our Lego head, Shift A, and add in an image texture. And we're going to set all these to non-color data, these images we're going to use for surface imperfections, because we don't want them to affect the yellow color of our Lego head. Hit Shift A, and we're going to add in a normal map. We can drop that in, drag normal to normal, color to color and go ahead and open and I just navigate to those textures and I'm going to drop in scratches mix 008 and add in this normal here and you'll notice what it's done because my head's already unwrapped is it's added these scratches which are a little bit too strong so I might just turn the strength down and what we can do now is add in some more um, imperfections in this case I might just duplicate this image texture and this image we're going to load in now is going to be some fingerprint smudges which go a long way in adding to the realism and we can drop that into roughness and now you notice here if you get the right angle with light you can actually see there's now very soft fingerprints on our Lego mini figurehead so what we can do if you want to add in maybe some other textures like for example a dust effect you can just go ahead and add in a pardon me, a mix RGB, drop that in here and duplicate our image texture, go ahead and navigate the other text you want to put over, so maybe it's this dust small 05 and just drop that into the bottom and set it to screen and then obviously you can go completely zero which will show the top one or completely one which will show only the bottom one I'm pretty sure. So if we just set that at 0 0.5 it should display both. So you don't notice it too much at the moment and that leads us into our next aspect of creating a realistic Lego character and that is lighting. So for lighting what I use quite simply is just um, the Pro Lighting Skies demo. Once again this is free, it takes about two minutes to download from Blender Guru and install and once you have it it's really simple and effective to use. So if you want to download that I'll have a link in the description. All you need to do to use this is once it's installed, put a tick next to ProLine Skies, change it from cloudy to morning, and then set the rotation to something like 190 degrees. And you see, we now have nice, strong lighting on our Lego character. Now, our Lego hair still isn't looking very real. That's because, and I don't think I've unwrapped this. Oh, I have unwrapped it? Okay. We haven't added any imperfections to that. So let's just select our Lego head again. Um, B, select these effects we've applied to the rest of our face and just using Control c copy them then Control v to paste them G to grab and let's just plug screen um, or our 
fingerprint and dust into roughness and our normal map to our normal. So now if we look at our Lego hair, it looks a bit more realistic. That's looking a bit better. And our face is looking a little bit flat, so we might just select that, this face rig, and enable smooth shading on our eyes as well, just so they're not so noticeably bent. And if you're still finding that you don't like how it looks, although smooth shading seems to fix it for me, you can just subdivide it smoothly or a few times, subdivide it a few times. So finally, on top of surface imperfections and lighting, the last thing that helps create a realistic Lego character is camera focus, I find. Because most of the time when you take pictures or images of any Lego character, they're quite small, so you often have the background around them blurred. So adding a nice blur can make it look like you've taken a close-up macro photo of a Lego character's head. To do this, just right-click to select your camera, and under depth of field, change the size up to maybe something like 0 0.5, um, change the rendered view, and change the focus distance until you've got your Lego character's head in focus. Something like that is looking really good. Now finally we can go to our render settings, go down under film and check transparent. That way you can render this out as a transparent image, make sure RGBA is enabled. That allows you to keep your alpha channel and then you can put um, a real photo of Lego bricks in the background or whatever background you'd like. Maybe it's animated so you don't need to worry about this. Then for rendering, I just go to Scene, check Denoising. And for me, because I'm rendering on a GPU, I have my performance um, tile set to 256 by 256. And my render can be, oh, I'll change to 100 samples. And let's just render that quickly and see how that looks. And that's basically it, guys. I think that covers everything. So pretty much, like I said, you can recreate this step-by-step uh, -step process. Uh, to create different mouth rigs and I think it does work really well but comment below if you have a question or you're having trouble using this method also feel free to comment if you like to request a tutorial we'll do our best to create it to answer any questions you may have thanks so much again to Citroen's animation for the excellent request we hope this answered your question so if you're able to use this uh, tutorial and to create your own video please feel free to send us a link whether it's by commenting your channel in the comment section or you can email us at creativemediabasics at gmail.com. This has been just the basics of creating a Lego mouth rig. See you in the next episode.